OK, so we're going to look at some different formulae for the area of a triangle. So in contrast to the classic one, a half AB sine C, where C is the angle enclosed between the sides of length A and B there, we'll have a look first at this scenario where you have two angles, capital A and B, then you also have a side not enclosed between those two angles. So how I would find the area here, just intuitively, is we could use the sine rule to find the side length opposite angle B, then we could do 180 degrees minus A and B to find the angle there, and then just use our a half AB sine C. But we'll try and do this in a more general way so that we can go straight to a formula rather than having to carry out all of these steps every time. So if we draw this out, and we'll just add some more labels here, so we've got lowercase letters representing side lengths and capital letters representing angles. So this will be capital C here, lowercase c here, and lowercase b for this side length at the bottom, opposite b. And here the area is just a half ab sine c. We're going to use this as our starting point using our previous formula. And we can work out c easily enough. We know that c is just 180 degrees minus a plus b. So then when we calculate sine c, we can express this in terms of a and b as sine 180 degrees minus a plus b. And we can actually simplify this using a trig identity here, because we know that for any value of theta, sine theta is always equivalent to sine 180 minus theta. So where we've got 180 minus a plus b, we can actually just write this as sine of a plus b. So we've got sine c is just equal to sine of a plus b, which we'll substitute into this formula later. So now we just need to find the length lowercase b here. And we do this using the sine rule. So b over sine capital B is equal to a over sine capital A. So then we just multiply on both sides by sine b. So we see that b is a over sine a multiplied by sine capital B there. So then we can substitute all of this into our formula. So we get that the area, first of all, we have a half multiplied by a multiplied by b, which is a sine b over sine capital A. And finally, we need to multiply by the sine c term, so we multiply by sine a plus b. And then let's just put this into a single fraction then, giving us our new formula for the area of a triangle where we have two angles and one side not enclosed between the angles. We're going to get a squared from the two a's multiplied by sine b multiplied by sine a plus b, and then in the denominator from the half we get a 2 multiplied by sine a, so divided by 2 sine a. So this gives us then a new formula which we could go straight to if we knew capital A, capital B, and the side length a there. We could find the area of this triangle immediately. So now let's have a look at a slightly different case. Well, we've got two angles and one side, but it's slightly different because these two angles are the ones which touch the side that we know the length of. So what I would do here to solve is we've got a and c, we just need the edge length at the bottom there, lowercase b. So first of all I'd find the angle a here, just doing a is 180 minus b plus c as before, then we'd use the sine rule to calculate the side length b, then use our original area formula. So using the sine rule we would have find the length of b, b over sine capital B is a over sine capital A. So just like before, we multiply by sine b, which we know, but the only issue here is we don't know what sine capital A is at the moment. So we know that a is 180 minus b plus c, so we know that sine a is sine 180 minus b plus c, but then remembering our rule from earlier, if we have sine 180 minus theta, this is always equivalent to just sine theta. So we can actually rewrite this then as just sine b plus c, just like before. So we can replace our sine a by a sine b plus c in the formula, and then we get b is equal to, we'll have a times sine b divided by sine a, so divided by sine of b plus c. And then we can substitute all of this into the formula now, a half a b sine c. So to conclude here, we get the area is going to be a half a times b, so times a sine b over sine b plus c, and then finally a b sine c, so we need to multiply by 
sine c. So expressing this as a single fraction, we've got a squared sine b sine c in the numerator, and then the half goes into the denominator as a 2, so we've got 2 times sine of b plus c in the denominator. So this isn't bad, this is quite a nice formula for the area of a triangle, but actually we can use some trig identities in a sec to get what I consider an even neater formula for the area of a triangle in this case, where we know the two angles enclosing this one side. And to simplify this expression, let's first of all look at our sine b plus c term. So using the standard angle sum formula, sine b plus c can be written as cos b sine c plus cos c sine b for any values of b and c this result will hold. And then we've got sine b plus c and sine b sine c in the numerator. So let's actually, we'll work the reciprocal version of this. Let's imagine we divide through by sine b sine c. So then we can just take reciprocals later to turn this into our original expression. So everything here needs to be divided by sine b sine c. So when we divide here by sine b sine c, you can see some terms are going to cancel. And similarly for the second term, dividing by sine b sine c, our sine b's cancel here. And in the first expression, our sine c's cancel with each other. So then we're just left with cos b over sine b, which you can actually write as cot b, because this is the reciprocal of tan of b. So we can write this cot b plus, and here we've got cos c over sine c, so this is cot c. So this is our expression, sine b plus c over sine b sine c, and then what we really need is the reciprocal of this. So we can write sine b sine c over sine b plus c as just the reciprocal of this, so 1 over cot b plus cot c. And then substituting this into our formula for the area now, the numerator we're just left with a squared, so this is all area equals, and then in the denominator we keep the 2, then all of our trig terms have just turned into 1 over cot b plus cot c. So we have in brackets there 2 times cot b plus cot c, which I think is an even more elegant way of expressing what the area is of the triangle in this case, where we know the two angles enclosing the one side. And now finally, let's look at the case where we're given all three of the side lengths, but we don't know any of the angles. So how I'd intuitively go about this is I would use the cosine rule to find one of the angles here. So we could say cos capital C is C squared minus A squared minus B squared, all divided by 2AB. We'd find the angle C, then we'd use our formula at half AB sine c. So it becomes a little bit messy trying to go from the cosine rule giving us an expression for cos c into a nice expression for sine c. So we're going to do this in a bit of a roundabout fashion. So what we want is we want an expression for sine c. And to do this we're actually going to write sine c as sine of 2 times c over 2. So that then we can use the double angle formula for sine to express this. So you have sine 2 theta becomes 2 sine theta cos theta. So here our theta is c over 2. So we get 2 sine c over 2 cos c over 2. And it turns out we can get nice expressions for sine c over 2 and cos c over 2 from having cos c. But it doesn't work out as nicely going straight from cos c to sine c. And how are we going to do this? Well, we've also got the double angle formula for cos. So where we've got cos c, we can write cos c as cos 2 times c over 2. And this is equivalent to cos squared c over 2 minus sine squared c over 2. And then we can turn this into just an expression in terms of the sine c over 2, first of all, using the fact that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is always equivalent to 1 here. So then we can rewrite our cos squared c over 2 as 1 minus sine squared c over 2, which gives us 1 minus 2 times sine squared c over 2 is equivalent to cos 2 c over 2, so this is just equivalent to our original cos c. Then we can rearrange this, we can add 2 sine squared c over 2 onto both sides, subtract cos c, then divide through by 2, and then eventually take the square root. So we can get sine of c over 2 is going to be plus or minus the square root of, let's just recap the steps here, we did 1 minus cos c and then divided through by 2. So this is all being square rooted and we have the positive 
or the negative answer here. But then remembering that C is an angle in a triangle, we know that C has to be at most 180 degrees. So the fact that C is less than or equal to 180 means that C over 2 is less than or equal to 90 degrees. So sine C over 2, this is certainly going to be positive. We can't get the negative square root solution. So we can actually say this is just equal to the positive square root. And we'll do something similar with cos now. So using the double angle formula again, instead of expressing this all in terms of sine squared c over 2, we can express this all in terms of cos squared c over 2. So we can say that cos c, this cos 2 times c over 2, it's going to be equal to cos squared c over 2 minus, then instead of having sine squared c over 2, we can write this as 1 minus cos squared c over 2. So this gives us 2 cos squared c over 2 minus 1. And again, we can rearrange to make cos c over 2 the subject here. So we'd add 1, divide by 2, and square root. So we'd get cos c over 2 is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of, we've got cos c plus 1, all divided by 2. But again, using this logic here that c is less than or equal to 180, so c over 2 is less than or equal to 90. This makes more of a difference for cos, because sine even up to 180 is still positive. But here, for cos, if we had something greater than 90, if c over 2 was bigger than 90, we could get a negative solution. But because c over 2 is less than or equal to 90, we know that we get the positive square root. So we've managed to get some nice expressions for sine c over 2 and cos c over 2, which we can then substitute in to this formula for sine c as the product of these multiplied by 2, and eventually we'll be able to simplify and get a nice formula for the area of a triangle in this case. So now using the fact that the area is given by a half ab sine c, and using the fact that we've got this expression for sine c, you can say that the area is a half AB multiplied by 2 sine C over 2 cos C over 2. And we even get some cancellation here, the half and the 2 cancel with each other. So then we've got AB multiplied by the product of these two terms, which we now know as well. So when we multiply sine C over 2 and cos C over 2 together, we're going to write this whole expression in a single square root. And we'll change the order of the multiplication. So we'll start with cos c over 2, because we'll see that we're going to actually get a difference of two squares type expression. So instead of writing cos c plus 1, we'll write this as 1 plus cos c, and then this gets multiplied by 1 minus cos c when we include the sine c over 2 term. And all of this is divided by 2 and divided by 2 again, so divided by 4. So now we're going to focus on simplifying the numerator inside this square root. So this 1 plus cos c, 1 minus cos c, using our expression for cos c in terms of the three sides of our triangle, lowercase a, b, and c. So we can rewrite this as we're going to have 1 plus c squared minus a squared minus b squared, all divided by 2ab, and this gets multiplied by, it'll be 1 minus c squared minus a squared minus b squared over 2ab again. And then we can change both of these ones. Let's just rewrite them so that they've got a common denominator as 2ab over 2ab. So then we can turn each of these expressions in brackets into just two single fractions. We've got 2ab over 2ab again there. And we're going to group these terms together slightly differently. So here in this first bracket, we're going to have c squared, and then we'll write minus in brackets, we've got minus a squared, and then this 2ab, we could take away negative 2ab to give us a positive ab, and finally we've got plus b squared inside the bracket there. So this b squared stays negative, and this is all still just divided by 2ab. And similarly for the bracket on the right hand side, we can take this 2ab and our a squared and b squared terms, which are actually both positive because we're subtracting negative a squared and negative b squared. So we'll write this as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and we'll just put this in brackets, make it really clear what we're going to do next, minus c squared, and this is all still just divided by the common denominator of 2ab. So now you can perhaps see that we can factorise each of these expressions in the brackets within our brackets there. So this first one is going to give us, this is a minus b all squared, and this still all gets divided by 
2ab and then we multiply this by this is going to be a plus b all squared. When you expand this bracket you'd get the a squared plus 2ab plus b squared and finally we've got the minus c squared term there. And again this is all just being divided by 2ab. So we'll clear some board space and then we'll continue simplifying the product of these expressions which will simplify this term within our square root there. So now you might notice in this expression we've actually got two difference of two squares expressions in our numerator. So we can expand these. First of all we'll have c plus a minus b in the numerator and secondly we'll have c minus in brackets a minus b. So c minus a and taking away the negative b gives us a positive b. And similarly here we're going to have a plus b plus c multiplied by a plus b minus c. And this is all still being divided by both of these denominators which we multiply to give 4a squared b squared. And at this point we can actually simplify the numerator somewhat here by noticing that we've got a plus b plus c. So if we introduce a new variable let's say a plus b plus c is p. So remembering this is just the perimeter of our triangle so we call this p. Then you've got this term here a plus b plus c is just p. But then for example this term here a plus b minus c this is like having the perimeter a plus b plus c but then we take away two lots of c. So this is p minus 2c and similarly here we've got c a positive b but then it's like we've taken away two lots of a from the perimeter so this is p minus 2a and similarly this term here is p minus 2b. So then we can rewrite all of this now as first of all we'll write p and then we'll put them in alphabetical order p minus 2a, p minus 2b and p minus 2c finally and this is all still being divided by 4a squared b squared. So this is our nice expression for 1 plus cos c, 1 minus cos c. So now let's substitute this into our formula for the area. So we need to square root all of this and divide it by 4. So we can turn this 4 here into a 16 and then we square root all of this and we finally multiply it by a b. So this is our expression for the area now and we can simplify even more here. So the square root of the a squared b squared just gives us 1 over a b which cancels with our a and b on the outside and then this leaves us with we're going to have the square root of p, p minus 2a, p minus 2b, p minus 2c, all of this divided by 16. And we can actually simplify this even more now by instead of having this division by 16 we can consider dividing each of these four terms individually by 2 which is equivalent to dividing the whole expression by 16. So this will give us without any fractions now we'll have the square root of p over 2, p over 2 minus a, p over 2 minus b and p over 2 minus c. And we can simplify this even more. The fact that we've got p over 2 is a little bit dissatisfying but we could introduce a new variable let's call this s which is p over 2. So s here stands for our semi-perimeter or just half of the perimeter of our triangle. And then we see that we can rewrite the area of our triangle then in our final form which is going to be the square root of s times s minus a, s minus b and s minus c. So this we've actually arrived at Heron's formula here which involves the semi-perimeter of our triangle just a plus b plus c divided by 2 and our three lengths that we know a, b and c. So we get a really nice satisfactory answer for what is the area of our triangle when we only know the three side lengths and we don't know any of the angles.